to all of you. Welcome in the secret place. This is your pastor, Yeti. We are hopping on in Psalm 14. Still a long way to go, but anyway, we don't have to rush, right? I'm going to read for you Psalm 14. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread. For God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Our key verse in this psalm is, there is no one who does good, not even one. Verse 3. When we observe the behavior and attitudes that permeate our society today, there can be little question about the depravity of people who do not know the Lord. In fact, all of us have hearts that are corrupt. Only by God's grace and His redeeming power does anyone have any degree of righteousness. Since Adam the heart of man is inclined to sin. Corrupt motives are characteristic of our sinful nature. Abominable deeds are the result. In self-centered pride and arrogance, we have convinced ourselves of self-sufficiency and that we are Lord of our own lives. Humanism is a prevailing philosophy in which people exert their own will, feel adequate in their own strength, and have the right to choose their own destiny, no matter who is affected or victimized. People justify doing whatever pleases, and gratifies them. There is no absolute truth or moral parameters. These results in a libertarian attitude of anything goes. It is a natural expression of the flesh and it characterizes our nature apart from God. There are few true atheists who deny the existence of God, but many practical atheists who ignore him in order to pursue their own desires. For if one denies God, then there is no accountability. While many may take this position due to the pseudo-intellectual rationalization, it is foolish to deny the realities that testify to his existence. His sovereignty over the universe and our need for him. Nevertheless, 
This is the human predicament apart from God. We don't understand or seek after God. Our hearts are corrupt, our deeds are wicked, and we don't call upon God in times of need. But we are assured that God is with the righteous generation. He is a refuge for those who are afflicted by having to live in a godless society, ridiculed and shamed for their faith, just as the salvation of Israel came out of Zion. With the coming of Jesus, the Lord will restore his people who are captive to a sinful world. We may be mourning injustice and be subjected to influences and even laws that are contrary to the righteous of God, such as legalized abortion and denying prayer and religious expression in public places. Let me say this, I don't want to judge when there are couples who have to make a very difficult decision according to abortion. It's not my place. But we should rejoice and be glad. God is on his throne. He is our refuge, our security, our hope, and will reward the righteous whose heart is pure and those who seek to walk in faithfulness in contrast to the ways of the world. Let us pray. Lord, it is easy to recognize the godlessness and gross world lines that characterizes our world and society. No one naturally seeks you and does good. It is only by your grace that our hearts are changed from our corrupt sinful nature apart from you. Help me not to succumb to the influences and values of the world, but look to you for counsel and guidance. You are my refuge. You are my salvation. And I will be glad and rejoice in you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us always look in counsel and guidance as we have to give advice to people who come to us, even you not agree with it. You cannot be the judge. I cannot be the judge. So whatever comes to us in what we just mentioned in this in the secret place. Always touch people with love and advice and good guidance lead it by the Holy Spirit. We cannot always understand the decision of others. But we must understand that we must understand in good counsel and guidance. May God bless you in the secret place as we walk together in the Psalms, which is a very in-depth meditation. This book, as we go through the 150 Psalms, is a prayer book. Use it as you can every day. It never gets old. Blessings and love. Bye.